Hi guys, this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music. Welcome back to part 2 of this lesson. If you haven't watched part 1, please head over and watch that. It's in the description because part 1 will be definitely the precursor to what we are doing now. It's going to be a lot more advanced in terms of chord naming and we are going to start this lecture off with kind of a chord naming quiz where I'll not know the answers you have uh, compiled. We'll probably have one on our Patreon page for all the Patreon members. You can consider being a member there. But here is just going to be you try and guess the chord name and based on all the topics or all the concepts naming conventions covered in part one, we'll try and name a bunch of chords together. Okay, so before we get cracking, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and there's a bell icon for regular notifications. And all of my handwritten notes are available waiting for you on our Patreon page. Let's get cracking. So let's start this chord. What is this? So to triangulate this particular chord, start with what triad it is. Is it a major chord or is it a minor chord? As you can clearly see, there is a minor third in there, there's a perfect fifth in there, there's no diminished fifth, so it's no longer a diminished chord because a diminished is minor with diminished. So you'd call this a C minor, but with a major seventh. Now what do you name this? Not C minor add major seventh, no. C minor major seventh, close. So that's the chord. And get the intervallic relationship. A minor major seventh would be one, three flat, five, major seventh. So you can now build a bunch of other minor major seventh chords. That's D minor major seventh. That's that's E minor major seventh. That's F minor major seventh. You see, it has pretty much the same vibe. You can kind of use it in in context. Maybe a bunch of minor major seventh chords would work in a movie score, I'm sure, right? Where there's absolute mystery and uh, you, you don't know what's going on in that particular movie. So that's about that. Next chord. So a lot of people might look at this and think, hey, this is E flat major with a minor seventh on top. So shall we call this an E flat major minor seventh? Oh man, that sounded confusing. E flat major minor 7. Maybe you can write the minor 7 in brackets. But now I need to tell myself, whenever naming a 7th chord along with a triad, it is not that tricky. So don't do all of that stuff. We just have a name for it. A major chord with a minor 7th is dominant 7th. Case closed over. So make sure you learn all your dominant 7th chords. They are very, very, very important. Okay. Each of these chords will have uh, 12 to, to learn, 12 to muscle down on the piano keyboard or any instrument which you play. Okay, what about this chord? Nice, beautiful, jazzy kind of chord. So first, let's look at the quality. First of all, do you feel that the root should be D? I guess so, because it's very triadic in nature. Now you might argue... This feels like an F major with some kind of a D bass, but there are names for this. If you look at it, it's a D minor. That's the D minor component. Then you have the, there's a minor seventh in there. So D minor plus a minor seventh would be D minor seventh, isn't it? So D minor, D minor seventh, then D minor seventh with the ninth. So you don't need to say D minor 7th add 9. You can just say D minor 9. That's the 9. D minor 7th with the 9. That's just simply called a D minor 9th. Case closed. Try to learn some of your minor 9th chords in other regions or in other registers of the piano. Very nice to arpeggiate this chord. Let's learn a C minor ninth. Let's learn an E minor ninth. You can also develop some tricks for yourself. What I used to do back in the day, a minor ninth, let's say E minor ninth. I just play E as my root and then I go upper minor third because it's a minor chord so you need to know your minor third and from there you can build a major chord 
you can technically call that G major slash E or it's just a visual shape to recognize and if you play a G major 7th up top you get a very similar vibe so that's E minor 9th kind of divided between treble and bass clef or left and right hand G major 7th slash E but don't call it that it's officially called E minor 9th it just makes it more physically understandable on the piano so that was about minor 9th ok let's now look at this chord ok again it looks very triadic in nature it feels like this is just in thirds we have just incrementally moved from a triad and gone beyond so maybe we are going to in introduce all those jazz intervals so let's see at its core is a minor third then becomes a minor chord then it becomes a minor seventh chord not minor add seven no need of that minor seventh now minor ninth and when you add the nine and the eleven you can just happily say E flat minor seventh nine eleven easy to say E flat minor eleventh that's the answer E flat minor eleventh you can even consider this as a kind of a poly chord so a poly chord is where you imagine maybe a triad there with your right hand and another triad there in your left hand there are some weird poly chords out there but this is an easy one to remember anytime you want a 11th sound a minor 11th sound you take any minor chord okay so let's try and get a minor 11th using a simple poly chord kind of technique we just formed e flat minor 11th right so let's uh, equate it maybe to c so C minor 11th would be C minor plus a major chord played at, at an interval which is a minor 7th apart. What is C's minor 7th? B flat, right? There we go. You can even freely invert that B flat to kind of give, you, give yourself different flavors. I love that voicing. Where you don't have the 5 very nice when you're playing guitar as well because you don't need to play all the notes to form the chord let's form another minor 11th sound so F is my root this is your minor chord what is the minor 7th interval from F either you count 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 go to E flat that way or a minor 7th would be the octave minus 2 steps so that's E flat but you want to play it as a kind of a poly voicing with E flat major on top F minor on the bottom so that's how you can remember a minor 11th sound if if that helps you otherwise a minor 11th would be a minor 7th chord with a 9th and 11th there we go let's journey forward what about this chord first of all it sounds rather familiar doesn't it sort of like what Jimi Hendrix would pay, play in his uh, blues rock songs So that's one way to recognize it but now to name this let's figure things out okay by the looks of it I have nominated E as my root now in the right hand if you observe the notes which are played there's G sharp there's D and there's G that's weird because there's a major third in there and a minor third in there so don't get confused let's take the major third as a start so E major with the flat 7 we don't need a 5 in order to call it a dominant 7th chord right so I'm sure you'll agree that this is an E 7th with a G so do you call that E 7th add flat 3 or something like that technically it is but no remember what I discussed in part 1 if you haven't already again try please watch part 1 Whenever there's a 7th chord, the extended interval or the upper intervals This one, that's the G Would not be referred to with 3, 2 and uh, 6 It would be referred to as 9, 11 and 13 So the G would now be visualized as a 9 sharp or a sharp 9 It's also called as an augmented 2nd An augmented 2nd is a minor 3rd, right? So E sharp D G and that's your Jimmy chord or the Jimi Hendrix chord 
It's a nice way to voice it also on the piano. It's how guitar players voice it, I think. It's pretty easy to play with some of the open strings on the guitar. So, uh, a, a trick if you want to play it on the keys, the way I like to look at it is you take any note, any of the 12, you play C for instance. You do, you do C and you do its third which is E. You go to its tritone and then a perfect fourth. So you just look at the intervallic relationship between each note. Major third, tritone or augmented fourth and then perfect four from that tritone. So visually it kind of cascades pretty well for your eyes at least. Major third, tritone, perfect fourth. So that's your C7 sharp nine or your C Jimmy chord if you will. I've done a playlist we've put a playlist on we'll leave that in a description where it's called my favorite chords of all time you'll find quite a few of the chords which i use in my composition sometimes i overuse them because i love them so much so check out that playlist we we'll link that up in the description let's do a couple more there we go what's this up to if you look at this pretty easy if you look at this shape it's C major minor seventh. What do you call that? C dominant seven. Simple. Or just say C seven. So C seven with a C sharp. Weird. Remember you have a seven. So any extension will be called as some kind of nine. Now is this a nine normal? Or is it a nine flat? The answer would be nine flat. Beautiful chord. So, quick trick to form a 7 flat 9 chord. Let's take a root, let's say B flat. You go up a major third and form a diminished 7 chord. So, what's a major third from B flat? D, right? And from D, you build a diminished 7. It's a very easy chord since it's a cluster of minor third intervals. And Resolves beautifully. You almost don't know what's going to happen to this. It sounds weird. It's You don't know where to go next. It kind of wants to go to that uh, E flat, doesn't it? So it's a dominant chord. So anything with a seventh function is called as a dominant chord. It tends to want to resolve. It's it's a It'll tend to be, it is the five of some one and it wants to go to that one. Right, So if you take, in this case, B flat wants to go to E flat major or E flat minor because of that dominant wanting to go to the major or the, the minor or the major. It has that pulling, that magnetic function, right? That's mother nature for you. So uh, one more rather tricky one. What do we call this guy? So that's a G seventh, if you look look at that. But I've played the third of this chord on top, and I've added the thirteen because there's a seven. Remember, with the seven you need the thirteen, and I've pushed the thirteen up top. So you could call this a G seven thirteen, thirteen in brackets. If that works, okay. One more with some of these tensions of chaos in the middle with this A, B, C, right? So, what do we like to call this? A very Lydian sounding chord. So, you would call this an F major 7th because it's not dominant, it's a major 7th. F major 7th with the B, that makes it a sharp 11, right? Because you already have the 7, so F major 7 sharp 11 would be the name of this chord can play it here, can play it here. And if you want a few add examples just for, just to kind of pack up this quiz, what would this be? So that would be a C minor add flat six. Okay, uh, what would be this particular chord? This would be a D minor add major six. No need to say all that, this is just a D minor six. Case closed, D minor sixth. Okay, 
what's this there's an e major add 6 no need to say all that it's just a good old e major 6th simple okay so add chords can be used pretty much in with all our intervals this is c major add 2 the c minor add 2 this is c major add flat 2 and so on and so forth right so i hope naming chords is no longer an issue for you if you watch part 1 and part 2 now with part 2 i just like to cap off with a couple of things how to name all the dominant based extended chords i that i think is a common challenge faced by many and i'll also look at some different chords like 6 9 and quartal chords so let's kind of look look at some more of the geeky stuff moving forward we'll have c now as a base so c dominant 7th so let's look at all the variations of c dominant 7s you can do it with respect to d or anything after figuring it out on c so this is c 7th what would this be and call this as c 7 flat 5 because the 5 got flattened what's that that's c 7 sharp 5 because the 5 became augmented or sharp 5 raised Okay, that's flat five sharp five for you. Now, that would be a C ninth. You don't have to say C seven add nine. It's just C ninth. Now, you could call this as a C seven flat nine. Flat nine in brackets would help. It would be a C seven sharp nine. Sharp nine in brackets, also known as the Jimmy chord, as we discussed earlier. Then. Let's look at some uh, elevens. So this would be a C eleventh. So with respect to eleventh chord, you have a few naming technicalities if you want to uh, uh, look into that. This is a C eleventh, but there is a third. So you can say C ninth add eleven. You're saying add eleven because there is a three. What happens when you don't have the three? You can say C nine sus sus what sus four, because that's now the four. Okay, but in theory these are all kind of eleventh chords. Okay, now let's look at some eleventh variations. That's a sharp eleven for you. So you would call this as C nine sharp eleven, right? So you have your normal eleven, which is a perfect fourth played up up above. That's a sharp eleven. Then you could also look at some thirteenth sounds. So that would be C thirteen or a C ninth or write the thirteen in the brackets. I just like to call it a C thirteen. Then you could do a you could do a flat thirteen, but usually a flat thirteen you'll not have a perfect fifth. and then i prefer to avoid that flat 13 altogether and just refer to it as a sharp 5 it's a lot easier for my brain at least so you can have some really exciting dominant chords out there maybe like this one quite like this chord so this could be referred to as a c7 flat 9 with a in brackets you could perhaps write c7 flat 9 sharp 11 if that works right so i quite like that chord not used it that much might use it soon now so this would be a c 7th but but a sharp 9 cuz a 9 got sharpened c 7 sharp 9 and sharp 11 of sharps in there so you could kind of name your dominant chords accordingly right but it all starts with c e g b flat so that's about naming our dominant chords and um, just to conclude the lesson there there's this other kind of chord which goes around where uh, even i've learned this name pretty recently it's called the 6 9 chord so to build a 6 9 chord you can go you take any root go up a major third or even a minor third it'll work even for minor 6 9 so this would be called a c 6 9 to read this it will be major third 6 and a 9 so we don't it's a kind of a unique naming system because you don't have the uh, 
the seventh in there. So we say C69, and if you minor it, you could call this a minor 69, C minor 69. So C major 69, or just C69, C minor 69. Okay, you also could consider poly chords or slash chords. A basic slash chord would be a triad there with a different bass here. Now, to do some interesting slash chords, like you could do a B flat here with a C here. So you could even call this as B flat forward slash C, but it reminds us of some kind of 11th sound, right? A very 9 sus 4 kind of sound. But it's easy to visualize. You can just write it down as a B flat slash C. At least us piano players like it sometimes like that. Okay? You would also have some interesting shapes. Like you can say uh, you take a, a e, min, e flat minor with a, a D flat major up top. We discussed this earlier. So this is called as a polychord where you have a D flat major slash E flat minor. So you can D flat slash E flat minor. You can write down chords like that. That will be called as a poly. And last but not least, again, a, a chord type which I've used strangely enough a few times in my career without knowing the name of it. You just think to yourself, why should all chords have these thirds, annoying thirds, everything, major third, minor third? Why can't they be built in fourths? So this is where we have what's called as quartal chords, which incidentally have names to them. So if you take C and you build perfect fourths from C, what's the perfect fourth from C? It's F. What's the perfect fourth from F? It's B flat. This is what we call as a C quartal chord or C quartal. You can write C capital Q. That's the name for it. Okay. Now if you do this sort of a voicing, this sort of a shape, you're doing perfect fourth meets augmented fourth. You would call this as CQ plus, C quartal plus. The plus means you don't have a flat seven, you have a major seven. And then what else can we end up having in the quartal family? call this as C sharp 4 Q or C sharp 4 Q yeah sharp 4 Q quartal okay so C C Q or C quartal C Q plus or C sharp 4 Q these are the quartal chords out there so if you know of any weird chord name or any chord voicing which we haven't covered in this uh, two parts rather elaborate two part series perhaps you could leave them in the comments and let me check them out i would love to learn a, 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 a weird chord name or a shape which you've uh, which you've found from somewhere let's try and talk about that Okay, uh, so thanks a ton for watching this two-part series. I will catch you in the next one. Before I sign off, it will be great if you can hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you want some detailed, regular, structured, weekly theory, year training, piano, composing classes, you can always head over to nathanielschool.com, which is our music school, and fill up a form, and our course advisor will reach you at the very earliest and our notes are waiting for you for this lesson and many more on our patreon page thanks a ton for watching this two-part series i will catch you in the next one cheers